Scott Harrison, Sioux Falls. I first want to say I was watching the informational today about the parent transit and uh, didn't, didn't go to any of the meetings, so I don't know a lot of the intricates of it. But I was listening to the conversation today. You have to realize something about people with disabilities that are working. They are contributing to our society. If you take away a service from them where they can go to their job, they turn into a burden, um, welfare, whatever. Um, we talk about economic impact with our uh, entertainment facilities, but there's actually an economic impact when it comes to people with disabilities who work. And yes, it costs us money. Yes, there's deficits, just like entertainment facilities. But we much rather have these people working because they much rather would be, they want to work. And uh, just take that into consideration as you guys move forward. Um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about I saw on the consent agenda that there was over $200,000 going towards the plumbing, upgrading plumbing at the pavilion, and we're fixing the roof. Uh, steel roofs are supposed to last between 40 and 60 years. This one lasted about 14. Uh, we're already upgrading the plumbing in the building. Uh, I followed the construction of the pavilion over the years, and you know it was totally gutted. It's all new. I'm just hoping, you know, I'm not going to say that bad work was done, but you're, you're kind of getting the assumption that bad work was done. And I'm just hoping with the event center, there's not bad work being done. That 16 years, 14 years down the road, we're running into these kind of problems. That is a $120 million facility. <coughs> the pavilion was supposed to be $20 million. And what kind of problems are we going to be running into? I hope this is what, being watched very closely. And lastly, I wanted to talk about the 4th of July parade. I thought it was one of the best 4th of July parades we've ever had. And as I'm watching it, I'm going, wow, this is really good. And vehicle after vehicle was going by. And most of them were city vehicles that were decorated with city employees driving them. I started thinking about it later after the parade, and I go, of the one day that public, public employees should have the day off, shouldn't it be 4th of July? So I was thinking to myself, were they getting paid? to do this? Do they volunteer? Who decorated the vehicles? Who put the gas in the vehicles? I think of 4th of July, July parades celebrating democracy. And I'm just curious, and I probably won't get an answer tonight, is how much money did it cost taxpayers to have that many public vehicles in the parade? Um, we talk about the importance of a democracy. And one of the most important things in democracy is voting. And we talk about in this last municipal election how we had to have super precincts so we could save money. So one of the more, most important things in democracy is voting. We need to save money on that. But entertaining the public in a parade, there's money is no object. I found it disappointing. And like I said, the biggest thing that bothered me, it wasn't the money. It was that these, these public employees had to work on 4th of July, given maybe a couple hours. Maybe they volunteered their time. But this would have been a great time for them to spend with their families watching the parade and not participating in it. And you know, like I said, I don't know the answer to that question. That's why I ask it. Um, but let's, let's try to remember what a democracy <coughs> is about and what is important in a democracy. It's about voting and having a say in what our government does, and not about ticker tape parades, entertainment facilities, bad plumbing, and, and stuff like that. Thank you. Welcome. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City okay. Council, men and women. At the, I'm Ken Tunison with the Military Order of the Purple Heart, and I would like to hand out a, a P38 for thank you for your service and a Purple Heart coin. So I'll just pass it on down, sir. Ken, if you can, what we'll do is uh, one of the counselors will just grab that from you if you, if you don't mind. It's a new policy <coughs> that the council's implemented. And, uh, but again, thank you so much. Uh, for all you've done and, and for recognizing their service and, of course, uh, your service as well, Ken. It's great to have you here. Thank you so very, very much. Any other comments, sir? 
Well, please welcome. Good evening. I'm Sharon Tunison, his wife. Um, Sharon. I took part in the 4th of July parade. was fantastic. I was so thrilled. I represented the Legion and the Auxiliary. I handed out over 1,100 toys, items, flags, stickers, whatever. And before the parade, I was talking to a couple of cement truck drivers. I asked them, are those brand new trucks? No, we washed them up. They're used every day. I said, geez, you guys go through a lot of work. And you know what their reply was? Not as much as our soldiers. <laughs> this is our payback to them. So I'm sorry, but in, in your comments about having them work, I don't think they'd be there if they didn't want to be. They're there because they want to be. And their families are watching with great pride, as are the soldiers' families. Thank you, Mayor. It was a terrific day. I enjoyed it, and I will be back next year again. Thank you. Sharon, thank you for the comments. And Ken, always thank you for your, your stewardship and leadership as well. Thank you. Welcome. Good evening. My name is Gregory McKee. I'm originally from New York City. I'm right. also a Navy vet. I am a first-time dog owner of about 13 months. I've been walking my dog off-leash for a year now before I was told that it wasn't okay to do. My proposal to the council is to change that ordinance to one area, the 2.35 mile stretch north of the Maple Street Bridge, east of the river, west of the golf course, west of the airport fence line. I um, never have a problem out there. I don't see why it can't be an off-leash area. If I pass another owner with a dog, we put our dogs on the leash, and then we pass, take them off the leash, and they run. Um, so I, don't, I think it's a cheap alternative to, I mean, it's, it shouldn't cost very much to implement something like that. I walk the 4.7 miles round trip occasionally. Not many people are going to do that, so I don't see why that area can't be utilized as a dog off-leash area. Can we get that enacted today, tomorrow? <laughs> Gregory, thank you, and, and welcome to our town, it's, and uh, thank you for your testimony. We appreciate that. If, if I may, Mr. Mayor? Yes. If I could get him to spell his last name, please. Gregory, could you, uh, would you mind spelling your last name, just for the record? It, I think it's... Hold the M-C-K-I-E. M-C-K-I-E. Thank you. Thank you again. Great. Would anybody else want to engage the council? Welcome. <clears throat> Excuse me. Robert Colby, private citizen. Uh, last week you heard a presentation from uh, President Oliver from Augustana talking about culture and cultural affairs in the community. And I'd like to make a pitch, if you would, I'm not representing any particular organization, although I have membership in several that are interested in this sort of an uh, this sort of a thing. In other words, it, when you had the cultural committee, I don't know that there was anybody who was there who was specifically representing the history aspect of our community. It's been always important. The South Dakota State Historical Society started about 1900. Their first publication was in 1902. The Minneapolis County Historical Society started in the 1920s when they filled in the left arm of the river. That's as you're going downstream. There used to be an island, and they filled in the left side. And I don't know whether it was a power grab or whatever, but they, uh, only the right side of the river is what flows today. Then they put the bridge across with the railroad. Now, the Historical Society, Minneapolis County Historical Society's first endeavor was to start planning for a pioneer monument eventually up on top of the Cliff Avenue Hill. They started in about 1926. It was to be lit at the top, and it was to be similar to the Abbey Gardner Sharp monument that's over in Spirit Lake. Well, in 1928 or 9, they were getting ready to do it. Then all of a sudden, uh, economy hit the skids. The Depression in World War II put it off, and it wasn't dedicated until 1949. The next project was to keep the old courthouse that was the county courthouse. It is one of the icons now of our community. 
they vacated the county vacated it uh, vacated that structure in 1961 and Carl Heinzen a person of very interesting history and background as you can ask me about sometime anyhow the Minneapolis County Historical Society was one that pushed for the saving of it Amongst those present to do that sort of thing were Tom Killian, Bill Webster, Hazel O'Connor, Gary Olson, and myself. Um, we're the only two living, Gary and myself. Mike Shermer thought that that would make a damn fine parking lot. The County Historical Society wanted to be a partner with the museum, you know, a, an unofficial non-governmental partner, but the uh, museum director at that point in time decided they wanted more of an in-house uh, group and so they started the museum associates and we are one of the few museums in the country where the historical society is not a partner at the table in the late 1980s the county wanted to tear down the old jail well we eventually saved the front end of that and took off the jail cells and that is an addition to the community the Minneapolis County Commission what he wanted to and did tear down the old Dakota Iron Building. That was right next to the Coliseum. They did that. They thought it would come down easily and it took them about a week to beat the damn thing to death. And about two years later, Mike Wrench, uh, Jack Wrenchler, excuse me, said, I think we made a mistake on that one. I had the opportunity to serve with Mike Shermer. He was a gentleman. But we would argue about things like preservation. For him, anything that was new was good and anything that was old was not worth keeping. How many of you knew that he was a circus bareback rider? That's what he did. He came from Wisconsin and I grew up in Baraboo. He pushed for urban renewal in the 1970s. And most of the late 1880s and up to 1910 structures in downtown Sioux Falls were taken down. And what did we get? We got them all. And it took us, what, 25 to 30 years to recover from that. Well, we've learned some lessons, I hope. Minneapolis County bought the Coliseum, and it was my dollar. And they voted four to one to tear it down. The County Historical Society rose up and said, no and it's a fine structure to add to our community now. We need to do more about repurposing some of our older structures. Now we can't say of everything, I realize, but we need to take consideration and make it a conscious decision rather than just haphazardly tearing down our history. People don't come to South Dakota or Sioux Falls looking for the opera, the ballet, or the avant-garde architecture. They come for what they perceive we are. They come for the cowboys, Indians, and the Old West. They come for the vastness of our state. We think we're urban, and really, we're rather rural. Our parks are mostly for the local people. We use athletics to attract people, and Commissioner Councilman Anderson can speak to getting people here who are interested in athletic endeavors in the summer. But look at our parks, the Arboretum in the east side of the community. That has and is there because of history. McKinnon Park, that has and is there because of history. Sherman Park is there because of history. Falls Park is the reason we are here. This structure that we are in is here. It is an historic structure in the community, and it's an asset. The Siouxland Heritage Museum, the old county courthouse, that is here because of the history. Commissioner Colby, could you, uh, we're at six minutes right now. Uh, usually it's five minutes. Is there a summary that you could give to the council, please? Include the arts, include the history, build new, preserve the old, and take care of the current. But please give history a piece of the action, so to speak, because if you don't, you're going to have a lot of troubles along the way because they will rise, people will rise up and say, no, we don't want you tearing down this structure, that structure, or the other. So with that in mind, if you have any questions, I would be more than happy to try to answer such. 
Commissioner Colby, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Folks, anybody else want to engage the council tonight?